Hello friends. So as a part of Stipex series, something different from infection I was covering. So this is a nice little article that came uh, looking into algorithmic approach to acute pulmonary embolism. So this came in 2025 uh, by the US authors in uh, annual review of medicine. So it's a good algorithm to just look into because the focus of PE until now, as we all know, was sort of limited to uh, anticoagulation and thrombolysis in hemodynamically unstable. So now if we look into this sort of an algorithm, it just opens up a new dimension or a vista as to how we may have to go a little more precision oriented with regards to catheter directed therapy, which seems to have got emphasis in this algorithm. So I'll just take you through this, maybe next two minutes is just a snippet. Uh, so the first step is obviously uh, once you confirm the PE with the CTPA, which appears the, to be the gold standard, uh, one has to start antiprogression. That I'm sure it's intuitive, everyone does that. Then one has to look whether patient is hemodynamically stable or whether there is hemodynamic instability. When we say hemodynamic instability, so what are the things that we look at? We look at either patient having bradycardia or someone who's had a cardiac arrest, then obviously that becomes uh, very unstable or systolic blood pressure less than 90 millimeter mercury with a proven PE or drop in the systolic blood pressure more than 40 millimeter mercury from the baseline is considered hemodynamic instability or someone needing vasopressor. So if you have a patient with PE, confirmed PE with any of these, then you have to look into the options. So this is where it becomes interesting that uh, this algorithm goes more invasive. So if there is whether you look at whether there is hemodynamic, if there is no hemodynamic stability, then you follow the pathway of risk stratification, which I'll talk on. But if there is hemodynamic instability, suggestive of catastrophic P, which means there is an increasing dose of vasopressors, cascading dose of vasopressors, perpetuating hemodynamic instability and cardiac arrest. So what are the options? So if, if the answer is yes, if they are in a catastrophic P, with a cardiac arrest or cascading sort of need of vasopressors, then you have to ask yourself the question ECMO. So this is where the whole dimension has opened up. That in P with worsening hemodynamic instability or cardiac arrest, upfront the algorithm suggests you have to think whether patient is for an ECMO candidate. If the answer is yes, then the suggestion is that they need to be put on ECMO, VA ECMO. If the answer is no, then obviously you have to support with uh, HFNO, vasopressors, oxygen support, and fluid optimization, balancing the fluid between RA and RV. And then after this, even if you are not put on ECMO, you see the algorithm focuses more on being more invasive, whether patient is stable to go to a cath lab for catheter-directed thrombolysis or catheter-directed thrombectomy or surgical embolectomy or thrombectomy. So these are the options upfront it suggests in patients with ongoing hemodynamic instability. So of course we do we do consider systemic thrombolysis, but if you look at this algorithm, the focus is more on cath lab and catheter directed thrombolysis, thrombectomy, or even surgical is what the suggestion is. So if there is hemodynamic instability, the answer is no. Then further risk stratification, the suggestion is one has to look into the right-sided RV, whether there is a strain on the RV, whether the RV is dilated, whether there is RV dysfunction with TAPSI, or you look at whether there is a rise in cardiac troponin or NT-proBNP. So you have to look into this to categorize the risk, whether they are high risk, moderate risk, or low risk. If both are abnormal, it means the echo, there is an echo findings of RV dysfunction and there is a NT-proBNP, that is indicative of cardiac stress or troponin high, we categorize as intermediate and high risk P where careful monitoring is needed. If there is only one abnormality, we call it as intermediate to low risk P. Even there, after anticoagulation, they have, they have to be monitored possibly in some monitored environment, be it ICU or HDU for 24 to 48 hours. And if both are normal, uh, in case who are hemodynamically stable, RB is normal cardiac, then one has to do PESI score. So if PESI is more than three, uh, then if answer is yes, it, it categorizes as intermediate to low risk. If PESI is less than three, then it categorizes as low risk PE. So PESI is pulmonary embolism severity index. So 
these are the sort of variables or elements in the PESI. It just gives you prognostication. As you see, uh, the points, they get around these sort of a points. The highest point, if you see, it comes for altered mental status, 60. And someone having cancer, heart failure, chronic lung disease, and hemodynamic instability get 30, as you see, systolic blood pressure being less. And if PESI is more than 125, the mortality sits at around 34.5. So I don't expect any of you to memorize this PESI. It is there in the MD calcs. You just put in this. But just bear in mind, hemodynamic instability gets higher score. Cancer gets higher score. Altered mental status gets the highest score of around 60. If you remember that, that should be good enough. So if it is intermediate high risk, again, even in intermediate and high risk, the suggestion is the choice of revascularization should be considered based on whether clot is retractable, patient preference and center. So as you see, this algorithm sort of signals or inclines towards going invasive, even in moderate to high risk sort of a PE. And if it is a low risk, they say keep assessing for 24 to 48 hours, even in low risk, they suggest if there is no improvement or functionally limiting symptoms, then the, there should be a suggestion or an option rather given about catheter, CDL is catheter directed lysis has to be considered because these patients may go on for chronic PE, pulmonary artery hypertension or CTPEH. So that is where you are seeing the algorithm of PE is changing from only anticoagulation to catheter directed lysis. Obviously when they are catastrophic, you have to go is what it suggests. But if it is even moderate to high risk stratification, uh, there should be an option that catheter-directed lysis has to be considered. Even in low risk, if functionally they are not getting better, this has to be thought of is what has been suggested. But if there is a good improvement in the symptoms, patient does not have any other functional limitation, then patient could be discharged on oral amplifier. So this is a nice algorithm, friends, where again we are seeing, like I recently, if you recall, I reviewed a, a sort of a literature on what is the new in ACS. ACS, they have gone fully invasive uh, that we have to do. So even in... Uh, pulmonary embolism, even if you look at strokes, they go more invasive. So now looks like this is coming into PE. So even in PE, moderate to high risk also should be considered for catheter directed lysis is what seems to be coming out in these new algorithms. So I would leave it to individuals to determine whether this could be implemented on clinical practice, obviously working with the teams they are uh, associated with. So I hope that was useful, friends. So thank you one and all. So I request you all to submit your valuable work to General of Acute Care. Of course, you can visit my website to rehear to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.